I think we have a problem with this tool post. Let's do something about this. I think these guys can help. Oh no. Ah, staples. Get you every time. Ooh, look at that. This is part number SDN 40CA. Oh, can't tell what direction this box opens. No, nope, not that way. Maybe it's just a regular box. It opens on the ends. Expecting that to be aluminum, but I don't, well, maybe it is. This feels heavy. I have that. The main attraction, and the sucker's heavy. Oh, there we go. Even got a brand new nut on it. All right, let's undress her and see how she looks. Nice and oily. Houston, where this was made, or the Houston area anyway, has humidity, so they got to oil stuff. I don't really have that problem. Oh, look at this, brand new tool post. I have never had a new tool post. SDN 40CA, first choice technology. Look at that. It's not even all dinged up on the side. How do you like that? Nice big old flange nut. <sighs> Look at that. Ain't she pretty? So it comes with these two dowel pins. So I guess if you want to, you can or if you already have holes in your compound, you can just drop these dowel pins down into your nut and then have a completely locked in position. But we don't wanna do that on my lathe because of uh, how much I need to move it from one side of the compound to the other. In fact, let's go put this on the lathe and see if there's still room for the other one, because I bet there is. Why don't we start by moving this guy over a little bit. So if we just set it right there, where the face of it is at the, at the edge or the front of the compound, let's put the other one on there. Look at that. So this compound is so enormous that I can run two CA tool posts back to back. And it looks like I've got enough room to Eh, maybe not lock this one, but anyway, my point is this tool post or this compound rather is extremely big and it's hard to see that on camera sometimes. I get comments on like Instagram where people be like, dude, your lathe is way too small to be doing this or that or when you're talking about this, I don't know why you're whining because it's small and it's, it's just not and it's hard to show that off on, on camera. So this is seven inches, you know, I've got pretty big hands wear large and gloves usually. And you know, that thing's pretty monstrous. So these tool posts are about the same size, but this, uh, the new dory in here is a little bit taller than that ancient Dolores one. So we're looking at, is that three and three quarters? By probably the same, it's probably cubic. Nope, not quite. And it's about four inches that direction and about four inches that way. So fairly cube-like. Um, oh, that feels so nice. Look at this. So this guy, 
Wiggle, wiggle, bounce, bounce. This guy, nothing. You can see a little bit of the oil movement there, maybe on the camera. There's, that's all you, can, all you can tell as far as movement. My hand's not holding it down very well, but anyway, my point is it's not all sloppy and destroyed. Just to be fully open and clear with you guys, this video is not a paid promotion. I do not get paid by anyone except for uh, YouTube, you know, Google AdSense, uh, which it's funny because that's about what they pay you in a sense. But anyway, um, Dorian has not paid me to show off this tool post. What they have done is given me a, a nice discount on this. I paid freight, I paid for the product from Dorian Direct. Um, they did not gift it to me, but they did give me a very nice discount and I offered because of that to show it off here on my channel and also on Instagram. So chances are you'll see pictures of it on Instagram before you do on YouTube. But um, I have been really, really wanting to uh, get rid of this tool post for a while now and it's an investment, right? These things are not cheap, even on, on eBay in not great condition, they're still pretty pricey. So I just kind of put it off or whatever and this thing has just been giving me problems so both of these work on the same principles, although the design is a little bit different. The whole idea is when you turn this lever, it locks this wedge down against the tool post or the, uh, between the tool post and the holder and allows that to be a very repeatable down to, I think it's like a 10th or something ridiculous, uh, repeatability from changing the tool out, putting it back in, it, it measures out to that close. And this one just, it's not there anymore. I don't know how old it is. I actually bought it from Abom. If you watch his channel for a long time, you may remember him getting an auction score there in, in uh, his area with a whole bunch of tool holders and a whole bunch of measuring instruments and all kinds of stuff. And I asked him, it was about the time I got this lathe and said, hey man, do you by chance have a, uh, a CA tool post in there? You got all kinds of stuff. And it turned out he did. So he gave me a nice price on it and I shipped it out here and I've been using it for, uh, geez, three years now. But uh, it's time to go. It's, uh, it's just a little bit clapped out and it served its purpose, but now it's got to go. So why don't we take off its hardware. And I'm assuming the uh, tool post thread will be the same. Bring that guy back, put this guy in the middle. Sloppy clapped out tool post off. For good. Oh yeah. Like a glove. So I'll go ahead and machine the uh, tool post nut and use that new stem or that new stud uh, off camera. So you guys don't need to see that. It's on YouTube in a million places if you really want to check it out. But um, the nice thing about this is, you know, maybe I'll use my old handle or maybe I'll make a new one that uh, has got a black finish on it so it matches better. But the nice thing is being able to move this thing around easily. So unlike most lathes where you just kind of put it in the middle and you know, if you've got like the multi-fix style, you, you don't even have to twist it. Everything can sit, you know, where the tool post is mounted firmly in one spot and never go anywhere. That's just not, the luck that I have or the constraints of this machine um, just require you to, to move the tool post around all the time to either clear the tailstock or uh, to get in and you have to change the angle of the compound all the time so that you don't crash into anything, you don't hit the, the, the workpiece or the chuck on the front and the tailstock base on the back. You know, it, it has to move around and this is gonna, I'm sure, uh, be more repeatable and hold down tighter. Because that's one thing that old Dolores, you know, God bless it, um, it just doesn't, it's just not tight. It doesn't feel like it's really holding onto the tool very well all the time, no matter how hard you, you lock the, the handle. Um, this, is, this is gonna be fantastic. So I'm not the right YouTuber for anything experimental or testing super accuracy or anything like that. That's to the realm of uh, Rob Renzetti or uh, Tom Lipton or somebody like that. Um, but I am here in my shop and I'm curious and maybe you guys are too. See what a, uh, a normal guy like me can, uh, can achieve in terms of 
repeatability. So I believe, and I'll check the literature and probably put it up on screen, but I think they claim that this will do two tenths accuracy or repeatability. So every time you put the, take a tool out, put another one in, it, it will be back in the exact same position within two tenths. So um, that's pretty darn good and seems like a bold claim. So let's test it out. I've got my uh, height gauge here with my tenths uh, interrapid indicator. So almost brand new. I've used it, but uh, not a ton. And I just have it sitting here on my big trusty bar of uh, A2 tool steel across the saddle. And what we'll do is I've got the, the readout on the DRO zeroed in both axes, and we'll just move the tool out from underneath the, uh, the indicator tip and then uh, back underneath, and we'll see kind of where it lies. Again, not the most accurate test. There's plenty of ways even I could do it better than this, but this is what I thought of in the moment. So anyway, there's my caveats out of the way. And like I said, we're at zero. So let's back the tool off. We'll take it out a ways. Undo the handle and pick it up. Pretend we put in a new tool. Jam that guy again. And let me bring my DRO to read zero and X. Oops, went past it. And my, the, D, the uh, resolution of the DRO is also two tenths. So I can get it um, pretty close, but it is finicky and it's moving a lot of mass. All right, so there's back to zero and, oh wow. How about that? Wow, that looks like less than, less than a tenth. Okay, let's try that again. Back out. Lock it back in. Back to our zero point. There we go, zero again. Oh wow, that's even, that looks like it's even back to, to where it was when it first started. Jeez, okay, well, like I said, flaws in my setup aside, um, this, is, this is measuring that repeatability and certainly in a way that is as useful as it'll ever be to me. Uh, I'm certainly not a chasing, you know, 50 millionths kind of machinist, especially not on this big machine. But look at that, man, I am impressed. Okay, very cool. So I will take that any day of the week. If I can uh, eliminate as many variables as possible, you know, that's what doing a science experiment and certainly machining is to take out as many errors or as many possible errors as you can. And when you do that, obviously you uh, end up with a better result. So pretty cool, I am, I am happy with that. And actually kind of surprised, I did not think it was gonna be that close. Oh, and just to show that it's not like there's some trickery going on here. So we're locked in now, it's at zero, even just unlocking the handle if you didn't notice it before in the video. So you see a pretty drastic change in where it's reading. But looks to be pretty repeatable. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by and checking out this video. Uh, it's nice and short. I hope you uh, enjoyed checking out the tool post. I know it's more fun to watch machining content, but this is important to me. Big thanks to the people at Dorian International Tool. Um, they worked with me on uh, uh, getting this for a good price. Again, not paid promotion. They didn't put any pennies in my pocket. I put pennies in their pocket, but I didn't pay retail and got a great tool post. So I'm happy. Hopefully they'll be happy seeing me talk about their good stuff on my channel. So thanks for checking us out. Um, I will be featuring this in many more videos. Every time you see the Monarch Lay, this uh, tool post is gonna be right here working. And based on the initial results, it's gonna be fantastic. I will update you guys if there's anything about it I dislike. Um, so far, I can't see what those might be other than maybe the block of the, you know, T-slot nut is too small for this compound. I don't know. I don't know what it could be, but um, either way, uh, look forward to having this on the machine. It's kind of completing the puzzle in a big way on this machine. I've got the fantastic DRO. It's uh, level and true. This thing runs super, super accurate. And now I've got a, an awesome tool post to uh, hold on to my tools. So I will be back soon with more content. And I hope you guys are uh, enjoying the videos. Have a good one.